Alright, today we're going to be using the lathe. The lathe is used to accurately remove metal from a cylindrical workpiece. Before we start machining, let's go over some nomenclature. There are two main axes in the machine, the x-axis and the z-axis. There are six main components on the lathe. This area over here is called the headstock. You have the chuck. This entire assembly that moves is called the carriage. The tool post is located up here. You have a power switch and the tail stock. Now let's take a look at this area. This knob adjusts the RPM of the lathe. Don't worry about this, we don't run coolant in the shop. The big red button is an emergency stop button. Do not ever push this button unless you're in a life or death situation. This is a tachometer. It tells you what RPM the lathe is spinning at. And these two lights over here indicate which gear you're in. So if we look up, we have a DRO. It stands for Digital Readout. This indicates where you are in space in terms of your datums. To manipulate the machine, you have two handles. The large handle over here is the z-axis, and the smaller handle up here is the x-axis. To figure out which direction the x-axis is going to move, use the right-hand rule. Using this lever, you can select which gear you're in, high or low. 90% of the work you do in this lab will always be in high gear, which is to the right. If you notice, the overall dimensions are 2 inches in diameter by 1.5 inches in length. It has a shoulder feature combined with multiple hole features. This is the piece of two inch round stock that we're going to be using today. Before we can load our workpiece, make sure that the machine is in neutral. We are right now in high gear. To find neutral, all you have to do is put it in between low and high gear. So right here. You can verify it's in neutral by free spinning the chuck. We're going to use a chuck key to open the jaws and load our workpiece. The number one rule whenever you're using the lathe is to never ever leave the chuck key in the chuck. Failure to leave the chuck key in the chuck before turning on the lathe can cause severe injury. Now it's time to load a tool into the machine. This is the turning tool that we're going to be using today. An easy way to remember which one to grab is that the aluminum has a similar color to the insert. To load a tool into the machine, take the tool post handle, move it forward, Slide the tool onto the tool post and tighten the handle. There are two parameters you must check for in your tool setup. The first one is center line and the second one is for relief angles. To check center line of the part, grab a six inch ruler and place it between the part and the tool. Make sure the ruler is pointing at the 12 o'clock direction. This ensures that the tool is cutting at the center line of the part. If the tool is not at center line, loosen the tool and move the adjustment nut until the tool is cutting that center line. The second parameter is a relief angle. We want to make sure that there's at least five degrees between the cutting edge and the part. If the relief angle is incorrect, grab the large wrench sitting on the headstock, loosen the nut, and adjust as necessary. Be sure to tighten it. Before we operate this machine, make sure you tie back any long hair, take off any watches or jewelry, and wear safety glasses. After clamping our workpiece, make sure you spin it at least once to ensure that the jaws won't hit the ways. Locate the power switch. To turn on the machine, push it to the right and down. To shut it off, keep an open palm and lift it up until it shuts off. The reason why you want to do this is so you don't accidentally put the machine into reverse. Whenever the spindle is on, Always make sure you maintain an 8 inch sphere of safety. That means your hands should never be inside that sphere. Now turn on the machine. Adjust the RPM to approximately 450 RPM. Now it's time to get our X0. Bring the tool close to the part and slightly scratch it. When this happens, go to the DRO. Now push the X0 button. Now it's time to get the z-axis datum. Bring the tool to the side of the part and slowly come to it until you get a small shift. Now go to the DRO and push the z0 button. Now that our datums are established, we can finally make a pass. 
The first pass we're going to do is a facing pass. The max depth of cut in this lab is 50 thousandths of an inch. We're going to remove 20 thousandths of an inch off of the face of this part. Now turn on the machine and slowly move the x-axis handle into the part. Try to maintain a slow and consistent feed rate. Now that the part is faced, it is time to do a turning pass. Since it says finish all surfaces in the part drawing, we are going to do a 5 thou depth of cut pass across the entire length of the part, which is one and a half inches. Move the x-axis to five thousandths of an inch. This will allow us to achieve our five thou finish pass on the surface of the part. Add oil to the tool and turn on the machine. Now slowly move the z-axis across the entire length of the part, which is one and a half inches. Now that the outer surface is finished, we are going to develop the shoulder of this part. This requires removing a lot of material at once. The max depth of cut on this machine is 50 thou radially. The machine is clocked to 50 thousandths of an inch radial depth of cut. Turn on the machine and make a pass. This feature goes to one inch, so we will only be moving our z-axis to one inch. To improve consistency and reduce operator error, we are going to use the auto feed feature. The idea behind auto feed is it automatically turns the handles for you while you're machining. To use auto feed, first make sure you're in the right axis. For what we're doing, we want to do long feed. So it's kind of like a H pattern in a car. You want this lever to be in this direction, so we're going to pull it in that direction. Before you use auto feed on your actual part, make sure that it is set up correctly. Move your tool out into air and turn on the auto feed lever and make sure the right axis is moving in the right direction. If it is moving in the wrong direction, take your reverse plunger and inverse its position, either in or out. With the tool out of the way, turn on the machine and flip your auto feed lever. If you notice, the z-axis is moving towards the spindle, which is what we want it to do. Whenever you're using the auto feed, always make sure your hand is always on the lever. Just in case something goes wrong, you can shut it off immediately. We're now ready to make an auto feed pass. Turn on the machine and index it to the next step of cut. When ready to auto feed, bring the tool close to the part. The second the tool touches the part, engage the auto feed. If you notice that the feed is much more consistent, Whenever auto feeding, always stop short of your target length and feed the rest in by hand. Do repeat passes as necessary until you get to the final diameter. We finally developed the shoulder feature of our part. If you look at the part drawing, there is a feature that shows a 30 thou chamfer on the sides of the part. To do this, what we're going to do is we're going to take our turning tool, rotate it roughly 45 degrees, and create that chamfer. Grab the large wrench from the headstock, loosen the tool post, and rotate it approximately 45 degrees. Be sure to tighten this nut back. With the tool rotated, turn on the machine and zero the tool on the z-axis. Once zeroed, move it 30 thousandths of an inch. The first half of our part is done now. We're going to remove the part from the lathe and cut the part to length using the marble. The part is now cut to length but the problem is, is we have a rough surface finish over here. So we have to clamp it back on the lathe and do another facing pass to have a smooth surface. We clamped our part 
reverse of how we did it originally. So now we can do a facing pass on this surface. With the machine on, we're ready to do a facing pass. For time's sake, we are not going to rotate the tool post and make a chamfer. Instead, we are going to put the machine at the lowest speed setting and use a file to break the edge. Now we're ready to perform the last operation, and that is the hole through the center of the part. If you look at this feature over here, it has a diameter of 3125. In a fractional size, that is 5 sixteenths. But if you notice over here, there's a very tight tolerance, plus 1 thou or minus zero. This very tight tolerance indicates the use of a reamer. Performing joint operations on the lathe, we want to start with an eighth inch center drill, followed by a 3 16 drill bit. From that point on, you want to do an eighth inch step up until you reach your desired diameter. Since we're using a 5 16 reamer, we actually want to drill out our hole a 64th of an inch under 5 16 In this case, we are going to use a 19 64th of an inch drill bit. To drill holes using the lathe, we're going to use a tailstock. To move the tailstock along the guideways, move this lever to loosen it, which will allow it to move it freely. If you push this lever forward, a friction lock will be engaged, locking the tailstock in place. Use this handle to move the tailstock in and out of its respective location. Be sure not to go past 20 millimeters when you retract the tailstock, unless you are at risk of ejecting the tool. The first tool that we're going to be using is a center drill. Insert it into the Jacobs chuck and make sure that the flutes are approximately an eighth inch away from the jaws. Use the key to tighten the assembly. Move the tool out of the way. When you are ready, turn on the machine and slowly bring the tail stock to the part. Be sure to lock the tail stock. Make sure that there is oil on the tool and slowly make a small peck. Now, shut off the machine, slide the tail stock back, and change the tool to the 3 16 Now, turn on the machine, and bring in the 3 16 inch drill bit to the part. Repeat the same steps. Peck drill as necessary. After every five packs, shut off the machine, blow the tool off of there, and add oil. Repeat as necessary. Once finished, shut off the machine and change the drill bit to 1964th. Once the tool is switched out, turn on the machine, bring the tail stock to the part, and repeat the same steps. Peck drill, and about every five packs, be sure to retract the tool and add oil as necessary. After the 1964th hole is completely drilled, we're now ready to use the reamer. Shut off the machine and insert the reamer. With the reamer, be sure to clamp on the end of it. This is to help the self-centering feature of the reamer. Also be sure to apply lots of lubrication to the reamer. When you're ready, turn on the machine and bring the reamer to the part. Be very gentle. After all this work, we are finally finished with all the lathe operations on this part. Now it's time to clean up your machine. First, remove your workpiece, then your tool, and then start cleaning, unless you're at a serious risk of cutting yourselves.